Uh, these grommets suck. What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be putting together this iFlight Turbo B 136 RS. Now this kit comes with just about everything that you need. It comes with the motors, the frame, the camera, the VTX, the flight controller, the ESC, um, battery leads, propellers. It comes with pretty much everything that you need. The only thing it doesn't come with is a receiver. So I have a QX7, so I just got a cheap XM Plus. All right. So let's open this up and see what's inside. So it looks like it does come with instructions. That's nice. And it looks like it actually comes with the pinout for your receiver. So I have an XM Plus. That'll be similar to an RXSR pinout. All right, so we got the frame. We have a little bag of hardware. Looks like some battery grips and battery straps. Two bags of props. This is a TPU canopy. Four Zing motors. Camera is in this bag. And then in this box we have this is the VTX, got a little antenna and some rubber standoffs. The battery lead, a capacitor, and the ESC stack. And the flight controller with a little, couple more standoffs. All right. I'm gonna put this stuff on a mat so it's a little easier to see. All right, so we got our four motors in the frame. Each motor came with a little bag of screws, so I'm just gonna open these up. So now I'm gonna bolt these onto the frame. Doesn't matter which motor goes on which arm. So it looks like there's two different length screws. We're gonna use the smaller one for this. All right, motors are mounted. So on this frame, this side is the front. So now I'm gonna get out the stacks. I'm gonna get the ESC out, the flight controller, and the VTX. So before I get any of the stack put together, I'm gonna to put the battery leads and the capacitor on the ESC. So on this ESC, this X is positive and this is the negative. I'm gonna put a little solder on here. and I'll put a little solder on the battery leads. Now I can kind of position these. If you don't have a pair of these helping hand things, I'll leave a link to this in the description. These are very helpful, especially for little things like this. So now with that lined up, I can very easily put this wire right on there. I like that. And we'll do the same for the negative.
and now the battery leads hooked up. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the capacitor on here. Now with the capacitor, this side right here is the negative and the other side is the positive. So I'm gonna have this coming out right with the battery. So I'm just gonna trim it right in there. Let's say about right there. And pretty easily just solder on the capacitor. There we go. We have the capacitor soldered right on top of the battery leads. And that does not feel like it's gonna come off. Perfect. So now we're gonna put the rubber grommets in each of these holes so that we can get the stacks on there. So on the ESC, you're gonna have the longer side of a grommet on the bottom and the shorter side on the top. On the flight controller, you're gonna have the longer side on the bottom and the shorter side on top, so just like the ESC. And on the very top stack, which is the VTX, this is gonna have the grommets that are the same size on both sides. Like I said, this is probably gonna be the hardest part of this entire build. All right, so now that that's finally done, I'm gonna solder on the receiver. Like I said, I'm just using an XM Plus. So this is just a simple S-Bus receiver. And on this, we have the top, the top pad is S-Bus. Here we have five volt and here we have ground. And if we look at the flight controller, and if we look at the flight controller, this very first pad right here is the ground. The one right next to it is five volts. And then this one right here is RX2, and that's where we can put the S bus. I'm gonna pre-tin those six pads, the three on the flight controller and the three on the receiver. So now I'm gonna go cut some wire and we'll get these linked up. We'll put a little bit of solder on those. So I'm actually gonna have the wires go underneath and in on the board just make it look a little cleaner. Now we will hook this end up to the receiver. So this yellow one is gonna go to this top pad. This is the S-Bus wire. And then we have five volt right next to it. And ground. Lipo straps, some stickers, standoffs, screws, and battery pads. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the stack together. Now on each piece, except for the ESC, you have this little set of pins. Now these should have a cover on it. This is just to protect it during shipping. But we'll take that little cover off. Now this is the VTX, so this is gonna go on top. We have the flight controller that we just soldered the receiver onto. That has a set of pins. We'll take that off as well. And the ESC doesn't have any pins. So now we're just gonna put these together. All you gotta do is find where the pins fit. Here's the female end, here's the male end. So now that's together. Here's a VTX, pins are over on this side. And that's it. I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink around the receiver just to protect it. All right, so on this stack, the little UFL antenna connector goes towards the back. So this is the front of the drone. So we're gonna have the battery lead coming off the side. So it's gonna go just like that. And you should have four really long screws These four. These are what's gonna hold the stack to the frame. So put these in, these ones, like that. And now we can mount our stack right onto that. Like I said, the antenna goes to the back, so the antenna, so the battery lead is off to the left. There we go. Nice. Now I'll put these tiny guys on. There we go. Now might as well just plug the motors in. So before you put down all the motors, there is a little connector right here and that's for the camera. So we're gonna put the camera in before you put the motor tab in because otherwise it's going to be blocking that connector so just like the motor tabs this can only really fit in one way like that we'll put the camera up there and now we can put this motor in and secure it to the frame So now we'll put the camera into the canopy. There's two screw holes. So now we're gonna go through a little pile of screws and find the smallest possible screws that you can find. They're about this big and they are very small. Now we'll get the camera lined up. There's one, two. All right, so now we'll take our antenna. We're gonna put the UFL connector part through this big hole right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this big standoff. It comes with one big standoff. We're gonna screw that in to the back here and that's gonna help prop this up. Take one of these screws, put it in that hole. And 
get the standoff on. There's that. Before you put this top canopy on, make sure you bind your receiver with your controller if you have to do that. So I have my XM Plus all bound up to my controller. All right, so I have the XM Plus right underneath this little bridge right here. Now I'm just gonna run the antenna wires over here. It's a lot easier if you take the camera out. You probably don't have to, but a lot easier. Pull that through there. And then this one right through here. I'm gonna slide the XM Plus back just a little bit. To do this, you kind of you kind of have to spread the antennas out. <clears throat> there we go. Now we can just secure this down, and we're good. Like that. Now in the front, we have two holes right here and you put the bolts down. Use some of these tiny hex bolts to hold it down. Now I have these antenna tubes. So I'm just gonna go around the antenna and in right there. Now we'll put these rubber caps on. Now I'll put on the little battery pad so the battery isn't sliding around underneath. We have motor one, two, three, and four. Usually motors one and four spin clockwise and then Motors two and three normally spin counterclockwise. So I'm assuming that that's how it's gonna be on this drone. And if it's not, I'll just change it. Now with the motors, now the motors came with longer screws, if you remember, those are the ones that hold the props on. So put those on each prop. That's a pretty cool little drone. We have these little mini iFlight straps. Aww. Now I'm gonna slide the LiPo strap right underneath the ESC and the frame. Probably be easier to do this before you put the stack on. But whatever, dude, too late now. There we go. Very cool. All right, so this is just about all set. All that's left is plugging it into Betaflight and making sure that everything is configured correctly. So we'll plug it in and do that now and then we'll take it out for a little test flight. All right, so let's launch Betaflight. I will plug the drone in. All right, so first thing you wanna do, go to ports, make sure that Serial RX is checked off on UART2. We put SBUS on UR2, so we'll make sure that that is the Serial RX. 
UART1 is reserved for the VTX control and that uses the IRC tramp protocol. So just make sure that's selected. And if you had to change either one of these, just make sure you hit save and reboot. I didn't have to change them, so I'm not gonna hit it. Go to configuration. We'll name this drone Turbo B. And this is right, S bus, perfect. Air mode. Cool. Looks good. Save and reboot. So now what we'll do is we'll just make sure that we are getting stick movement when I turn my controller on. Some flight controllers power the receiver, but this one doesn't look like it does. So in order to get power going to the receiver from the drone, we're gonna, we're gonna just have to plug it into a battery. So I'm gonna plug this in. Now I'm gonna turn my radio on. Perfect. That is the throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. Looks good. So as you can see, AUX 12 is kind of going crazy. That tells me that AUX 12 is the RSSI. So I'm gonna make RSSI channel 12. We'll save. Now we can come over here, go to modes, and we're gonna set up our arm switch will sw set up angle mode if you're gonna use angle mode. Any mode you're gonna use is where we're gonna set it up. So this is where we'll set up the arm switch. So we'll come here, hit auto, and trigger the switch that you want to be armed. That's aux one. Save. And I'm going to also set up angle mode. We'll set up the beeper switch. We'll set up flip over after crash. And let's see, we'll set up launch control. When you're done setting up the modes that you want, hit save, hit hide unused modes, and just make sure each one lights up when you flick it. Cool, looks good. So now what we're gonna do is just test the motors and make sure that each one works properly. Make sure you do this with your props off. We'll uncheck that and now we will spin up motor one. Looks good. Motor two. Looks good. Motor three. Looks good. Motor four. Looks good. All right, now I'm gonna set up my OSD. I like having the low voltage reading right at the top in the middle. You can put it anywhere. Set up your screen however you like it. That looks good. Hit save. All right, so now we're gonna set up the video transmitter. All right, so to set up the video transmitter, what you wanna do is go on GitHub and I'll leave a link to this VTX tables page on it, but you're gonna want the IRC tramp protocol text. So you click this and it'll open up a page and basically copy everything in this. And then you're gonna go back to beta flight and just hit load from clipboard and it will import all of this data. So our VTX doesn't have 400 or 600. So I'm gonna just change this from five power levels down to three because we have 25, 100, 200 and pit mode. Another thing that I'm doing, I did was change this to the channel that I use on all my quads 
and that is race band channel three and here's where you select the power so hit save and now what i'm going to do is go back to setup i'm going to plug it in and i'm going to turn my goggles on just to make sure that the video transmitter settings work and if i can change the channel and it changes on the goggles it's set up right all right so i have my goggles on i'm going to plug a battery into my drone and I'm gonna just make sure that I have video because right now it should be on channel three on race band. All right, so we have video. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start changing the values just to make sure that it changes channel. So I'm gonna put it on channel one and hit save and just make sure that it changes channel and it changed channel. Perfect. So save this, this looks good. And that's about it. Let's take it out on a test flight. All right, so I've been flying this for a couple days now, and I gotta say I am a pretty big fan of it. It not only was cheap, but very easy to put together, it came with everything that you need except for the receiver, but in the end you're looking at about 115, 120 bucks in total for everything here. One of the biggest selling points for me was the fact that it uses the same 4S batteries that I use on my Beta 85X and my 95X. I have a lot of those batteries. And now 
I can use them for things other than my Cinewhoops. I think my only complaint with this drone would be the fact that the tune on the drone when you get it isn't exactly perfect. You do have a little bit of prop wash, but these are things that you can always fix in beta flight. But otherwise, it does fly somewhat similar to a five inch drone, which is pretty cool. So all in all, I would definitely recommend this drone if you're just getting into FPV drones and just looking for a beginner kit that is easy to put together, comes with everything you need, and flies pretty good out of the box. So if this video helped you out, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, whatever dude.